Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome to the Sundays at Noon online series, filmed here in the Sculpture Hall of the Hugh Lane Gallery, Parnell Street, Dublin 1. We're delighted today to have musicians Virginal Rash, Annalisa Ponticelli, and Fiona Gryson with us. Before we begin, I'd just like to thank the Arts Council of Ireland, the staff at the Hugh Lane Gallery, and Near TV for filming this concert. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the concert.
I'm joined by American clarinetist and founder of the Vibra Musicale, Bernard Rash. Welcome to the Hugh Lane. Thank you. Welcome. Your concert today, full of magnificent clarinet music. Uh, tell us about the program you designed for today. Ooh. Well, um, today's program was inspired by just sort of the colors of, that I enjoy playing in, the, the color of timbres that, or the sound qualities that I love. Um, so you have a lot of French music, actually most of it is French, and then one or two outliers that sort of create a very beautiful atmosphere tonally, um, where the clarinetist gets to sort of play around and merge in and out with the sounds of the piano and the harp in this case. What sort of influences have come to bear on your musical personality over the years? Oh gosh, um, well, I grew up in a, a, a Christian household, a Southern Baptist sort of household, you know, Kojic. Um, so a lot of gospel music plays into sort of my musical ear. Um, grew up listening and singing gospel. And then naturally, when I started playing the clarinet, um, my teacher was fabulous and he presented me with really great examples himself playing and then this is my teacher in high school and also Harold Wright who was principal clarinetist of the Boston Symphony Orchestra for many years before his untimely death he um, has this beautiful sound and my teacher just kept you know presenting with these recordings of Harold Wright's playing and so um, I would like to think that at the core of what I do is sort of this tribute to you know the late Harold Wright so those he's been a huge influence my teachers of course and um, just having listened consistently to a really great example in, in Mr. Wright's playing.
Your fellow performers today are harpist Fiona Gryson and pianist Annalisa Monticelli. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me how you got together and what's that collaboration like? Well, I met Annalisa at the Royal Irish Academy of Music. She was assigned to me, unfortunately for her, um, <laughs> to be my accompanist for the year, um, for the end of year exams you have. And so we've met that way and worked together that way and we've kind of got on really well. And Fiona and I met at the Great Music and Irish Houses Festival years ago in a competition we were in. Well, both of them also have, their, like you, have their own solo careers yes, as well. Yes, they and do. And three <laughs> soloists or four soloists or five soloists as typically will appear in chamber music get together. What sort of dynamic is involved here? Because the music dictates a lot yeah. the, the composition, but also there's the musical personalities of strong soloist strong, players. Yeah, this is yeah. very true. Well, we're very fortunate. Um, Annalise and I play together. Fiona and I play together. The three of us have never played together, so <laughs> we don't have to worry about that dynamic currently. But Annalisa, I love her, and she respects me and I respect her, so we have this really great relationship in that she can be brutally honest with me, I can get in my feelings about it, and then under, later listen and be like, she's right, why is she right, why didn't I hear that? That's what it really comes down to. And then I can do the same, and she's like, yep, yep, you're right. And so we have this really great banter. Um, and it's always from a place of like mutual respect, and that's the thing. And Fiona and I have a different relationship in that um, Fiona's much more um, accommodating and will try to make something work on the harp. And like, no, I don't think this is going to work. And she's like, but I'll try it. So she tries it. And then we're, we both listen like, you know what, Fiona, you're not right. You're, you, so she uses a different sort of way of kind of negotiating her musical ideas that still works very well. And also, again, another relationship of, of respect. Um, but because of her personality being different than Annalisa, we have a different way of kind of communicating. So like if you watch the program, you'll notice that her and I really don't have to look at each other that much anymore because I'm, we're just so used to just kind of hearing in each other's gesture what they're planning to do next. And Fiona and Annalisa and I, opposite, like we gesture because of, you know, like we're both like steering, we're both driving. And Fiona and I are more like, we take turns. I like to be a, a passenger, a backseat driver, and sometimes she's a backseat driver. <laughs> and that's never I, the case I, with me and Annalisa. <laughs> I wonder will they disagree with anything you say. They probably will, and then we'll idea. like laugh about it. <laughs> you should ask them. Thank you. 
Today's music is very much uh, the music of almost nature, the landscape, the parlour, the picnic, you mentioned the Paul Reed uh, kitchen suite and so on. Uh, tell me a little bit about your own way to emotionally, if you like, negotiate what's in the music because there is that sense of beauty and tone and all the things you produce on your instrument which evokes an emotional response in people. How does that affect you in terms of your own ability to play and how you perceive emotion? Well, that's, it's, it's a, it's a, that's a complicated one because when I'm playing, I'm not necessarily keyed into the emotion of the piece so much. That work has been done prior to getting on the stage, hopefully. And so now you're really on the stage. It's not about my experience of the music. It's now my job to kind of create an experience for the listener. And so I can't invest myself into the emotional space in that sort of way. I can revel for a minute, like, oh, this sounds really great. But then I, think I can't linger there because I have to keep it moving. And that's the opportunity, that's the job of the audience to listen. So 
in terms of like really sort of connecting with emotional space in the music or sort of responding to it, it that happens before I get on stage. I kind of sit, listen to a piece, like, oh, I like this, oh, I really feel this piece. And I'm practicing, like, oh, that's great. And then you realize, oh, I can't be emotional. I have to be more analytical in order to get this to come across the way I want it to come across. And so when you get to that part in the concert, then hopefully you've now got, you've processed all that information, the motions, the thoughts, the, the technique, the air control, because that's a lot of it, and are able to then create sort of a moment for the audience to, to reflect and then hopefully experience those emotions that you did. I know that part of your musical philosophy is this idea of music as a buffer, if you like, hmm. uh, a buffer or a, a place of comfort to go to uh, in terms of experiencing life. Yeah, and I, I'm, yeah, well, I think that's for everybody. Like you, you have a song you love and you, you go to it and listen to it on repeat. I'm famous for hearing a great song and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be listening to the song for the next 10 days on repeat and just gotta deal with it because I have, I'm having a moment here. Um, so yeah, like music, I think for all of us sort of connects us to a time and place um, and can, pro can provide us an opportunity to sort of experience or process sort of whatever, or not even trauma, but even joy, happiness, peace, whatever experience we're having, music can sort of connect us to that and bring that forth and remind us of it or transport us out of that. So say we are in a, a really terrible space music can take us out of that. So I think, yeah, music is really powerful and pivotal in sort of negotiating those sorts of things. Virginal Rash, thank you very much indeed thank for, for this me. wonderful concert today at the Hugh Lane Gallery in Dublin and our lovely chat. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.